Please welcome Rex Tillerson, Chairman and CEO of Exxon Mobil Corporation, who has joined us tonight to accept the 2016 Guardian Award. Well, thank you so much, uh, Will. And uh, it is indeed a, not just a pleasure for me, but it truly is an honor uh, to be here to receive the 2016 Guardian Award uh, because of what it represents, who it's coming from, and the long relationship that we have enjoyed. And in my position, you know, I'm, I'm really uh, blessed to be able to accept a number of recognition awards. And when I do, I always am mindful that uh, I'm really accepting the reward on behalf of the almost 75,000 men and women of the Exxon Mobil Corporation who are working 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, much like all of you, to deliver the energy that fuels our economy and provides a quality of life that most of us take for granted and gives hope to others around the world who hope to have a quality of life like we do. And, and those men and women do it extraordinarily well, and I'm very proud to represent them. Uh, it is also a, a great uh, opportunity to celebrate with so many of you who share our deep respect for our servicemen and women, including our, our former governor, Rick Perry, who I know has strong feelings as well. So I do consider it uh, a great privilege. Now, the Guardian Award, as I said, it's particularly gratifying because of, of who we're receiving this from, what it represents. Uh, like the foundation, we at ExxonMobil appreciate and support the men and women of the United States Coast Guard who are always ready. We also share a commitment to the ideals embodied by this award because we believe in doing our part to protect the aesthetics, the recreational, commercial, and environmental qualities of our coast, our waterways, and our oceans. For us, the results of all these efforts are the culmination of a very long and a still ongoing journey and it's a journey that many of you have shared with us. We have many partners in the room who support our marine operations and certainly no greater partner than the Coast Guard themselves. It has been a shared journey to create for us a culture of safety, one that is focused on effective risk management at every stage of the value chain and the transportation chain as we strive to deliver that energy safely and responsibly. I've been in this industry now for more than 40 years and I've personally been part of that journey and, and continue to walk that walk and try to perfect it for myself every day. And I want to share a few thoughts around that with you because I know all of you share many of those same objectives as with us. So I want to briefly talk about what ExxonMobil has learned along that journey, uh, how we apply what we've learned to managing the risk in our business today. And, a little bit how government and the industry can continue to improve safety, operational performance, and environmental stewardship across all of our nation. You know, our approach to safety and risk management begins with a very, very clear and unequivocal statement. It's a vision of a workplace where, quote, nobody gets hurt. And that may sound simple, but it is really, really hard to do. We know that safety must govern everything we do, from our planning and facility construction to our drills and emergency responses and to the way we approach every business process on a daily basis. Now, for many of you, you will know that one of the turning points for our entire company came with the Exxon Valdez oil spill. It was a profound shock to us. It was one that caused all of us at Exxon to take a step back and examine how we were operating how we were managing risk, and how could this have happened. Before that tragedy, we had always said safety is our number one priority. But after that, our management undertook what I consider to be a very visionary approach. In the 1990s, we set out to wholly reorganize the company to put safety of people, facilities, and the environment at the very center of everything we do. Now, to do that, safety could no longer be a priority. Priorities can and do change as circumstances change. So from that moment on, safety became a core value because your core values never change, regardless of the circumstances. So to implement this change, we developed a comprehensive system 
with standards designed to identify hazards, manage safety, security, health, the environment, and the entire process of risk management. Today, it has evolved to what we call the Operations Integrity Management System. These standards work practices and regular and rigorous uh, site assessments associated with OIMS are in place today across all of our operations, everywhere you go in the world, so that as we move people about, they don't have to wonder what the systems or the standards are. They can immediately step into the OIM system and everyone operates under the same set of rules. Our OIM system is also de designed to handle management of change, as I said, because we move a lot of people around and things are constantly changing around us. And it does that by really fostering open and effective communications and by ensuring that people know they have a license to speak up, to close the knowledge gaps that may exist between us on what we know and what we do not know. But OIMS is just one part of the equation. Even the best safety systems are not effective unless they are part of a broader culture of safety. The unwritten rules and norms that shape mindsets, attitudes, and the way we behave. So OIMS is inspired by the belief that leadership drives culture and culture drives behavior. Leaders influence culture by setting expectations, building structure, teaching others, and demonstrating stewardship. That is why the first element of our OIM system is management, leadership, and accountability. But managers alone cannot and should not be the only ones contributing to safety and effective risk management. There must be a culture guiding and influencing decisions as well as behavior throughout all levels of the organization. Therefore, responsibility for safety and effective risk management comes not just from supervisors and managers, but from our employees, our contractors, our partners at every level. Of course, we have traveled on this safety journey over the years, and we've learned that encouraging a culture of safety means working beyond the bounds of our corporation and reaching out to educate and protect contractors, business partners, and the communities where we are located. On our journey, we've also learned that safety is too important to be considered proprietary. Industry leaders must continue to work together to share all that we know and develop as many ways as possible to share life-saving information and techniques. This is especially true in the wise and careful stewardship of our nation's oceans, rivers, and waterways. That is why we have been committed to working within our industry and with the government to share our best practices. This vision for safety and effective risk management must also lead to concerted action. For, for after all, a major incident for anyone in our industry is an incident for all of us. Tragically, we were all reminded of just how true this is only six years ago. At this time, six years ago, the U.S. government and industry were working day and night in the Gulf of Mexico to respond to the tragic accident, loss of life, and the spill from the Macondo. This event reinforced the critical lesson that incident prevention is always the first and best approach. We were reminded that risk management must be at the center of every step of the exploration and production and delivery of energy. We know that when you properly design wells for the range of risk anticipated, when you follow established procedures, when you build in layers of redundancy, you properly inspect and maintain equipment, train your people well, conduct tests and drills, and focus on safe operations and risk management, tragic incidents like the one that occurred in the Gulf of Mexico should not occur. The incident in the Gulf quickly inspired cooperative action by the energy sector. It made clear that our industry needed to enhance the capabilities to rapidly contain a deep water blowout, and we have done that. Just months after the incident, ExxonMobil took the lead in an industry effort to develop and deploy the marine well containment system. And we continue today to work with the system's other sponsors, Chevron, ConocoPhillips, and Shell. The $1.8 billion project has enabled us to more effectively and efficiently bring our combined expertise, equipment, and technologies to bear should a similar event ever occur. It's been a major investment, a contingency we believe we should never need. 
if our industry adheres to the stringent standards already in place. The Marine Well Containment System is an example of what vision, cooperation, and concerted action can achieve. We also know that it would not have been possible without the United States Coast Guard and its marine safety resources. We received guidance from and continue to work closely with the Coast Guard's headquarters and Marine Safety Center and the Marine Inspection Units from Activities Europe as well as Corpus Christi. On behalf of all the companies involved in the Marine Well Containment System and our entire industry, I want to offer my thanks to the Coast Guard and their support through this long and ongoing endeavor. Both government and industry must play a role in the safety, risk management, and environmental stewardship. Understanding these specific responsibilities and each other's respective strengths is one of the most important steps for us achieving our shared ideals and aspirations. As I've noted, industry's first responsibility is to operate in a safe, secure, and responsible manner, but government also has a role to play. For many years now, ExxonMobil and our subsidiary, Sea River Maritime, have worked with the Coast Guard to shape prudent maritime regulations. We have also worked closely with the Coast Guard to enhance our preparedness with our North American Regional Response Team and the training drills that we carry out jointly. Finally, we recognize another important function that can only be played by government coordination during times of crisis. In such circumstances, the federal government, working with state and local governments as well, must take the lead in marshalling resources and coordinating the response. The government is also in the best position to coordinate expertise and efforts volunteered by private industry in cases of such disasters. The U.S. energy industry, res industry's respect for this governmental role has been shown by how quickly and comprehensively we respond to government requests for input and assistance in times of emergencies. The waterways of commerce and trade has long been part of the story of energy. Across all points along our nation's vast shoreline, any time, any day, men and women of the United States Coast Guard consistently demonstrate an unwavering commitment to protect the public, the environment, and our national security interest. At ExxonMobil and Sea River Maritime, we are deeply thankful for your sacrifice and those of your comrades and your service. And we look forward to continuing our work with the Coast Guard to fulfill our society's shared aspirations for expanding energy supplies, increasing efficiency, and being wise and careful stewards of the environment. And once again, I am honored to accept the Guardian Award on behalf of the men and women of ExxonMobil, and I thank you for your kind attention.